I think the big problem with uh, certainly uh, DCB services is that there is a lot of negative chatter online. So when people receive a, uh, a charge on their phone bill that they don't recall, um, they maybe go and Google something and then once they've Googled it they can see a lot of negative chatter about, uh, for example in the UK, let's pay for it. You Google pay for it, there's pages of, of, of fairly negative chatter about it. So immediately that puts people on a defensive footing uh, and, and they'll phone up um, thinking that they've been scammed. So so agents are starting off from a, a disadvantage in terms of talking to, to the consumer and, and, and telling them exactly uh, what it was they signed up to or what, what the service was that they were they were billed for. And what we've discovered is, is that uh, if you can show email or otherwise a visual um, reproduction of what the consumer signed up to or, or, or were charged for at the time, 80%, um, above 80% of, of, of those um, queries were resolved at that point without the need for any refund. Because do not forget that we're talking in, in the vast majority of cases about compliance services that have been promoted correctly, they've followed the regulations, so there's absolutely nothing wrong with them. But you've got a problem with people forgetting, you know, a, a spur of the moment. And let's, let's remember, premium rate has always been about an impulse decision to purchase. Um, so maybe six weeks later, people have, have, have completely forgotten. Some people can't remember they bought a lottery ticket the previous week or donated to Comic Relief the night before. So you've, you've, you've got that to, to counter against. And, and what you need is really well-trained agents that are able to put consumers at ease and give them exactly the information they want and the details that, that will enable the, the query to be resolved and hopefully um, and not, not need to end in a refund. I think um, the, the, the MNOs need to um, point people towards the merchants in the first instance. Um, merchants need to provide a very good um, standard customer care. Uh, they, they also need to get into these forums or ask the ask the MNOs because very often the forums are actually run by the networks or, or the um, or, 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 or large forums like Money Saving Expert or something. So they need to get onto there and actually provide a grain of truth to counter a lot of these um, uh, uh, negative um, uh, uh, chats from people who just say, oh, you've been scammed. Uh, and and that's, that's what we're up against. And, and that's what we want to you know, turn around. And, and the bottom line is, is that if we can get complaints down and escalations down, um, so you don't want the MNOs referring people off to, to the regulators, for example, you want them going to the merchants and the merchants are, are able to resolve the complaint there and then. More complaints going to regulators and MNOs means more regulations, and, and that stifles the sector and it, and, and, and it kind of thwarts innovation. So, so really, as an industry, we should all be working together, all stakeholders, merchants, aggregators, MNOs, all working together to try and sort this uh, this issue out because it's had there's not been enough focus on it down the years. There are in the UK, there's the the PSA have got some um, um, some guidance on, on on their website, but it also needs complementing. And that's why we're running it as, as, as an AIM project to develop a minimum benchmark standard in the industry for um, current players and also give a guidance to new players coming into the market to, to that's the sort of level they need to aim for in terms of looking after the customer after the, uh, the purchase has been made.